Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Patrick Donnelly. I am the CephFS uh, project team lead. Uh, with me is uh, Tom Barron. He's the Manila team lead. Uh, I'll be doing all the talking today. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, also, part of this project is Ramana uh, Raja. He's uh, not here today, but he is also on the CephFS team and works on this. So. What we're going to talk about today is uh, basically three different projects. Manila, which is the file share service for OpenStack. Uh, Ceph, which is a common storage solution we use with OpenStack. And Ganesha, which is a user space NFS server that we're going to talk about more later. So uh, to give a very brief overview of what Ceph is, uh, Ceph is a distributed object store primarily. Um, that would be the bottom, which we call uh, Rados. And on top of that, we provide several storage abstractions, uh, which are more usable and uh, applicable to uh, various uh, workflows. Uh, for example, we have Object, which is uh, RGW. It's an S3-style interface. Uh, RBD, which provides virtual block devices. We use that with Cinder and OpenStack. And then also, now we're going to be using CephFS, which provides a distributed POSIX file system which we're going to be um, using with Manila in OpenStack. Uh, briefly, CephFS is, again, a POSIX-compatible distributed file system, meaning it provides the same uh, file system API that you all know and love, and also the consistency semantics that are required by POSIX. Uh, it has three primary moving parts. Uh, the metadata server, which handles the metadata up updates to the file system, uh, the client, which would be uh, whatever is mounting the file system, and then Rados, where all the data and metadata is stored. The clients, um, one of the innovative aspects of, of Ceph is that it allows the clients to uh, put their push their file I.O. directly to Rados and not have it go through the metadata server, um, so that reduces load there. Uh, the MDS also has no local state. Again, all the metadata is stored in Rados. So the two traditional ways that you would mount CephFS is through a uh, fuse, using CephFuse, or through a kernel mount. Um, we're also going to be talking about uh, today the NF uh, Ganesha, uh, which is an NFS server, and we're going to be using that as an alternative client for accessing CephFS. Moving on. Uh, so this is a big architectural diagram of, of how we use CephFS uh, in the past with OpenStack, um, and it's still being used today uh, as one uh, possible solution for connecting Ceph to your OpenStack clusters. This would be a what we call a native driver deployment, where all of the tenant VMs are able to mount Ceph using the kernel client. In this uh, scenario, all the tenants' virtual machines are connected directly to the Ceph storage network. Uh, we, we have considered this not to be an ideal solution because uh, we don't want the tenant VMs to have full access to the Ceph cluster. Any client of Ceph is considered to have a certain amount of trust. And uh, for that reason, we don't want the tenants to have unfettered access to Ceph. So we've been trying to improve on this. Additionally, um, it, we don't have any sort of coordinated uh, enforcement of, of what cl kernel clients the tenant VMs are using. And historically, older clients can give you a lot of problems. And so we wanted something that would be more uh, uniform. So some of the other options that we've been considering is to throw an NFS server in between the tenant VMs and the uh, Ceph cluster. The NFS would act as a gateway, uh, which would prevent the OpenStack tenant VMs from having full access to Ceph. Uh, this gives us better security. Um, for NFS Ganesha, though, we need to have some kind of high availability built into this because now it's a single point of failure between the tenant VM's uh, data path and the Ceph cluster. And so uh, the way we were resolving this uh, is by adding, using um, in active passive mode uh, multiple Ganesha servers and the high availability managed through Pacemaker and CoroSync. Uh, this is available now today in uh, OpenStack Queens. And so the new architecture of how this looks is, by, is we now have a storage NFS network through which all the tenant VMs access NFS Ganesha and therefore Ceph. Um, what would we like to improve on this, though, is we would like to improve scale out 
so that because now we have the single bottleneck for all the metadata and data going through to the Ceph cluster, we want to be able to scale out the NFS Ganeshes. Also, it would be nice to uh, further segregate the tenants fr uh, from each other by not having them access Ganesha over the same uh, storage NFS network. And so we would like to have uh, separate networks for these tenants. So uh, this is that ideal architecture that I'm talking about. Uh, we would have NFS Ganesha servers for each tenant. Uh, the, te the Ganesha server would be listening or would be uh, part of the tenant VM network, Neutron network, and also have access to the, access to the Ceph public, ne public network. So we have full segregation of the tenants. They can't, uh, they're not on the same networks. And uh, we have better scale out because we have a Ganesha server for each tenant. We would also like to improve on this even more by having the option of adding more Ganesha servers for each tenant so you can scale out depending on the file workload demands of your, of your tenant VM workloads. So how we're actually going to be doing this is we're going to be making Ganesha a first class citizen in Ceph with the help of uh, Kubernetes. Um, so the way this is going to be working now is uh, the Ceph manager, which is the operator for the Ceph cluster, is going to be handling the uh, creation of Ganesha Kubernetes pods. Uh, the, the pods themselves, the high availability is managed by, uh, by Kubernetes, so if a pod fails or uh, the Ganesha server becomes unavailable, Kubernetes will automatically create a new uh, pod, and that's how failover will be handled. The manager also has the ability to uh, create and manage the shares and restrict access to the shares, and then also to uh, scale out the replication by adding more pods in response to demand. The actual uh, use of this will be um, through a REST API that the manager offers, and now Manila will be uh, modified to use this new REST API to create these shares, which would include the file system name, how much scale out you want, which paths should be part of the share. Uh, and that's how these, these pods will be created. Um, Another motivation for doing this, a primary motivation for doing this, is we want to be able to use this uh, solution outside of, of OpenStack, uh, possibly even in a Ceph standalone uh, deployment where you have an existing IT setup that uses NFS. You want to be able to access CephFS using that well-known protocol, perhaps for security reasons. Existing firewalls may already understand uh, NFS. So. One of the primary challenges we're dealing with now in development is how we're going to handle the, uh, the scale out of NFS Ganesha. This is particularly challenging because when you have NFS Ganesha servers that you're adding uh, to a given tenant network or removing Ganesha servers, uh, because now you need to be able to redirect those NFS con uh, client connections to a new, uh, new NFS server in that, in that namespace. Um, that's solvable with a, uh, extensions using the current NFS specification using forwarding and, and redirects, but those are not yet implemented in Ganesha, and that's something else we're working on. As far as how we're thinking about how this might work, it, in one possible solution is we would have uh, a stateful set allocated for each uh, uh, tenant. And each of these pods would be the amount of scale out we have. So here we have a scale out of two. Uh, NFS clients would come in through a service attached to the stable set, which has a persistent IP address, and uh, be directed to a pod based off of load. Uh, this using a service in this way is really nice because you can use a single IP address for all your NFS clients. The hard part here is what happens if uh, a pod goes away. Will the NFS client's uh, connection be redirected to the other pod while the failover occurs and Kubernetes starts up a new pod? Even with the sticky sessions in, in the service, we're not exactly sure that'll work. So we might split this into multiple stateful sets uh, with a service uh, for each of these pods and then just uh, give Manila a bunch of IP addresses it can use for those tenants. We're still figuring out the details. 
So that's a whirlwind tour of what we're working on with this project. Uh, hopefully we'll have this solved in the next OpenStack release. And I'll take your questions now. Sure. Right. I didn't get, I forgot to mention that. So in the future, we're, pl we're planning for one uh, way of deploying stuff is on top of Kubernetes, and that would be done through Rook, which is a orchestrator for uh, Ceph deployments on, on Kubernetes. So in this, uh, for this solution, you would be required to have Kubernetes because the Ganesha, Ceph, and, uh, and Kubernetes are all tightly integrated to create this solution. No. Oh, he, he was asking if we have a triple O solution for the deployment. Is that right? Uh, with the Kubernetes. And the answer is, uh, I don't believe so yet. No, but we, we have a need, which you're identifying. So if, 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 we, um, if, we, if, we, if we are, if we are deploying um, Kubernetes, on top of OpenStack via triple O, uh, or if we're deploying it as, as we was discussed in the keynote side by side, then you could have some interesting possible permutations here. And it would be desirable to be able to push one button uh, to get um, OpenStack deployed, get uh, Kubernetes, in our case, OpenShift, deployed, um, perhaps alongside or on top, and then also with that be able to trigger the uh, Rook installation or whatever. But that's not solved yet. It, it's a clear, it would be desirable to make, make, it, make it easy for everybody. But we also might have, uh, and I would guess we would have, uh, you know, there, the Ceph team's gonna have a way to, to install this irrespective of OpenStack. So, you know, we, we, need, to, we need to be able to integrate with that. And, and they're, they're using Rook. And we're using Ansible, you know. <laughs> Any other questions? Except Ansible. So if you if you if you're in a I'll let Patrick pick this up in just a second. But if you're first of all um, in the classic OpenStack environment, you have untrusted user VMs, right? When I say they're untrusted, you they're they're not run by the administrator. They're self-service VMs, um, and you can make no assumptions about who's using them, how responsible they are, and so on, right? So now um, and you pick this up, but Ceph rely, the native Ceph F's, S solution requires cooperation between a Ceph client, which would run on those untrusted user VMs, and the servers. So that client can be hacked up, changed, modified, et cetera. For, for, for example, even um, uh, size of um, uh, what Manila would call a share, um, you know, relies on quota enforcement on the, on the back end. You can defeat that, I mean, as a simple example. So DOS attacks would be possible. Um, besides that, just you've your got direct connectivity to the MONs and, and, and so on. So um, you, can, you can imagine what a, somebody na with nasty intentions or just uh, sloppy software could do. <laughs> because you're imagining? So this is Ceph, the clients and the metadata servers assume a certain level of trust between them. So the metadata server hands out what's called capabilities to the client. That's just one, one aspect of this. And it assumes that the client will behave well and responsibly, like when the MDS asks for that capability to be released, that the client will do so. Because other clients are waiting for that capability to be released. Correct. Correct. We're, we're talking about the, the VMs 
and the and for example the kernel client. There, there could be, but there's a there would be a lot of changes needed to SEP. And currently, the way it works is we. Is, Right, so a key difference between Manila and Sender in OpenStack is that um, Sender block storage is mediated by the hypervisor. So the guest VM is, goes through the hypervisor in order to get at the storage. Whereas what we're doing is putting the guest VM on a network. Yeah, but, but with Manila, you're, you're more immediately connected to the server. Any other questions? Okay, I'm available uh, after the talk, so if you have any other questions, let me know. Thank you.